it is. We need other people from time to time because we cannot be all things to everyone all the time. Sometimes we need help. And I found that it is actually a humbling but beautiful place to get in life when we can accept the fact that from time to time we're going to need help. So I just ask, if you have ever gotten to that humbling yet sweet place of knowing that from time to time you are going to need help from time to time on different things, can you say amen? amen. All right. So we need help from time to time. I want to just shift gears for a moment. I want to put that part of the conversation on hold. I want to jump into today's scripture lesson. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of this part of the story, I want to rewind a little bit and just remind everybody that the story of Jesus' ministry goes something like this. He it comes on the scene as an adult. He is baptized by John in the Jordan River. He is tested by Satan. And he comes back and he starts this kingdom building ministry here on earth where he is bringing God's justice and God's love and God's peace and God's healing to fruition here on earth. And most of this ministry happens up around the Sea of Galilee. By volume, Jesus' ministry is centered around the Sea of Galilee but when the time is right, Jesus turns his face towards Jerusalem. He goes down the Jordan River to Jericho, and then he goes up from Jericho to Jerusalem. On his way into town, when he's still in the suburbs of Bethany and Bethpage, they procure a donkey, and Jesus rides in, as we talked about last week, into Jerusalem. And Joe and Josephine, Israelite, or everyday people, are there to celebrate that the Messiah is here. And Jesus rides in victorious with his Identity understood that he is the king. Well, this past week, we walked very delicately and slowly together as a church. As we remember, the, the celebration from Palm Sunday quickly turned against Jesus. And the cheers turned to jeers. Ultimately, Jesus was betrayed by one of his own. He was arrested, paraded through a kangaroo court beaten and mocked, nailed to a cross. I want to remind you, one of the things that we read in the gospel according to John in the third chapter is people in darkness oftentimes want to stay in darkness. That the people who, who, who are struggling with sin will want to stay in their sin. They won't want to step into Christ's light. Rather, they want to protect their ability to stay where they are in their brokenness. So this is true 2,000 years ago, and it's true to this day that sometimes people will, 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 will want to stay where they are in their brokenness. Oftentimes, greedy people don't want to stop being greedy. Hateful people don't want to stop being hateful. Arrogant people don't want to stop being arrogant. Lazy people don't want to stop being lazy. Whatever it is, people want to stay in their brokenness. And that's what was happening 2,000 years ago. As Jesus came to bring this ministry that was transforming the world to, to, to live in God's kingdom, God's reigning here on earth, people in their brokenness were resisting Jesus. They didn't want what he had to say. So they tried to stop him. And they did stop him by killing him. It was the Jewish authorities and the Roman authorities conspiring together. The powers of this world worked to stop Jesus because they didn't want the ministry that Jesus was bringing. And that's what made Saturday so deafeningly silent, so painful, because Jesus, our Savior, our King, actually died. And all of that is the backdrop for today's passage. The women woke up early in the morning. While the boys were still locked in a room, fearing for their own hind end that somebody might recognize them as a follower of Jesus, the women went out to go minister to Jesus' corpse. 
They weren't expecting anything other than a dead Jesus to be in the tomb. So it was from a place of grief and compulsion that they went to minister to Jesus' body. But they were rewarded for their courage and faithfulness to Jesus by being the first people to receive the greatest news the world has ever heard. That the Father has resurrected the Son, conquering death. And then the, 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 the angel says, go, go, go tell the disciples that Jesus is going to meet them in Galilee. So the women run off. And, and they're, they're, they're excited, they're scared, they're a little bamboozled because everybody up until that point who was dead basically stayed dead. And they just encountered a resurrected Jesus. So they're, 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 they're a little, or they've heard that there's a resurrected Jesus, so they're, they're a little confused. And then they meet the resurrected Jesus. They meet him and they, they don't know what to do quite Quite, quite, quite frankly, so they, they, they just grab his feet and they start worshiping because they're a little afraid, they're a little confused, and Jesus calms them down because he loves them. And then he invites them to do what the angel had said, go tell the disciples to meet me in Galilee. I want to make sure we understand what it means that Jesus is going to meet the disciples in Galilee but you'll have to suffer one of my antiquated movie references. Every year I get a little bit older and all of my references to music and movies gets older and older with me. So I apologize that this is a little bit old, but I wanna ask a question. If you have ever seen the movie The Blues Brothers, can you say amen? amen. Okay, some of us know that movie. The premise of the movie is there used to be a band, the band used to make a lot of music, and then the band broke up. And the premise of the movie is, we're getting the band back together. We're going to get back to what we used to do together. That's what Galilee is for Jesus. Galilee is the ministry that Jesus was about. That's where it was flourishing. That's where it was taking off. So the whole idea of, let's get back together in Galilee is a return to this ministry to make the kingdom of God, a reality here on earth. So, so, so Jesus is telling the women to go get the disciples, get us all back to Galilee. Jesus will meet them there, and we're going to get back to the ministry of bringing God's kingdom to fruition here on earth. So all that's going on in here in today's scripture passage. And there's a couple of different takeaways. There's a lot of different takeaways we can take. From this, but the first one that I want to make sure that we understand, I don't want to bury the lead any further. We celebrate as Christians that the Father has resurrected the Son. Because those who are baptized into Christ are baptized into his life, his death, and hope for what will happen when we die. It's also a message for here and now. It's a message for this life. And I want to point out that the brokenness of this world tried to stop God in Christ Jesus by nailing him to a cross. And they stopped him for a moment. But today we celebrate that God will not be denied. God will not be stopped. And the Father resurrected the Son, proving that God is more powerful than anything in this world. Nothing this world can offer is as powerful as our God. Nothing this world can do can stop our God. That's how powerful God is. And the power that was on display 2,000 years ago with an empty tomb is the power of God that still exists for God's people to this day. In the Gospel of John, we read, that, that, that Jesus tells us he is the true vine, and those who abide in him, he abides in them. Well, we, as Christians, abide in Christ Jesus through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. So as we abide in Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus is abiding in us. This power that overcame death is a power that is available for Christians to this day to do God's will. Now, I want to be clear. This power that God gives believers is not free of strings. There are absolutely strings attached to the power that God gives. God is not in the business of building your kingdom or my kingdom. 
God is in the business of building his kingdom here on earth. So as we abide in Christ Jesus, we know him better and we better understand what he wants, what his kingdom looks like. And this power is a power that God gives for his followers to overcome the obstacles of this world to do his will here on earth. So this power, this power that, 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 that rolled back a stone to show the world that death cannot stop God is on display in people's lives like your life and like my life even to this day. And it looks like somebody who's wrestling with an addiction, staring their addiction square in the eyes and finding sobriety on the other side. It's the same power that we see in believers when their marriage is falling apart and they find a way to pull it back together against all odds. We see it when families get rent asunder and the power of God can bring people back together to reconcile and to heal. The list goes on, but the same power that God displayed 2,000 years ago with an empty tomb is still moving. It is still working to this day in God's people, in your life and in mine, to help us do his will. So, my friend, I say all of that to say this. Jesus loves you. If you only hear me say one thing, please, 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 please hear me say this. Jesus loves you. And he loves you so much, he died on the cross to pay the price for your sins, and then he conquered death to spend all of eternity with you. But his love is not just something that you're going to receive on the other side of glory. There is power in the name of Jesus. We all need help from time to time in this life. And Jesus is that help that we need because he's got more power than anybody or anything else in this world. All power and authority has been given to him, and he comes to you. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. The power of the empty tomb is with you every day, helping you overcome whatever obstacles are in your way so that you can do his will in this life now. Will you pray with me? Good and gracious God, help us to celebrate what you have done for us in Christ Jesus. That you have conquered sin and you have conquered death for us. To be free to follow you, to live the life that you call us to. In this life and in the life to come. Father, help us to live grounded in the promise of Jesus' resurrection. Help us to cling to that power that, that you offer us to overcome the obstacles that stand in our way so that we too can follow your will in this life. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. To help us in our journeys of faith, Jesus offers us certain means of grace, things that we receive God's grace through. As United Methodists, we celebrate two sacraments, the sacrament of baptism and the sacrament of communion. A sacrament is an extraordinary means of God's grace. That in a more powerful and a more profound way than the other means of grace that are worship and prayer and searching scripture and Christian conference, through this holy mystery that we are about to receive, we receive God's grace in an extraordinary way. So my friends, I invite you to find a hymnal and open to page 12 as we prepare to celebrate a service of word and table two. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God, heaven and earth, hold your glory, hold down high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, hold down Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved of the Lord, I do want to make sure that you all know, first and foremost, this is not an exclusive table. This is not just for the people grace. It's not just for the people Methodist. This is Christ's table, and he welcomes all who earnestly repent of their sins and believe. So having met those requirements of repentance and believing, you will be invited to come forward at the direction of the ushers. Today, being a day that is set apart, we will receive communion along the chancel railing. So what that looks like is when the ushers invite you to come forward, we will fill the chancel railing on both sides. You will be invited to kneel when you arrive at the chancel. We will commune everybody at the chancel railing. You are asked to remain at the chancel railing until you are properly dismissed altogether. At that time, you are invited to make your way back to your seats so the next group can come forward to receive. A little bit of housekeeping about the elements themselves. We do use unfermented fruit of the vine, so if anybody wrestles with alcohol, you will find these elements to be safe. We also have gluten-free elements. Just let your communion steward know if that is your preference when you come forward. 
lastly, but not least, every time we gather to receive these elements of communion at the chancel railing, we as the people grace remember we are in communion with Christians around the world. And we have a tradition here at Grace that any money left on the chancel railing whenever we receive communion will go straight to Red Thompson, our United Methodist Panamanian missionary. So if God has put it on your heart to support the Panamanian missionary, Rhett Thompson, please know that you can leave an offering on the chancel railing when you come up to receive. But at this time, I'm going to invite those who are assisting with the elements to please come forward. And I'm going to invite the ushers to get ready to bring the people forward. Beloved of the Lord, the table is prepared. Please come at the direction of the ushers. <laughs> 